gentlemen, for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing red and weighing in at 154 pounds. He captured Olympic gold in 1992 and now, as a professional, with 33 victories in 35 bouts, including 27 knockouts, he has captured five world championships. Tonight, he is the challenger, looking to capture number six. Ladies and gentlemen, from East LA, here is the former junior lightweight, former lightweight, former super lightweight, and two-time welterweight champion of the world, the golden boy, Oscar De La Hoya. And across the ring, his opponent, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black with gold. He also weighed in at 154 pounds. His professional record is an outstanding one, consisting of 51 victories in his 55 bouts, including 34 knockouts. And he is undefeated for the last five and a half years, winning 14 consecutive contests with 11 KOs. Ladies and gentlemen, from Madrid, España, making his sixth title defense, presenting the reigning and defending WBC Super Welterweight Champion of the World, Javier the Lynx Castillejo. This is a huge event in the middle of the Two night seconds. in Spain as Vic Draculich pulls him in. All right, gentlemen, this is for the WBC Super Welterweight title. You received your instructions. Again, I want to caution you. Any punches below here will be called low. Any punches here will be called low. With that, are there any questions? Any questions for Chief Seconds? And remember, obey my commands, protect yourselves at all times. Touch them up now, good luck to both of you. Let's go. All right, so we're set to go, David. Take a look at Castillejo. Uh, obviously, he spent his uh, time in the gym. He looks to be in great shape and, and warmed up. You like to see the sweat pouring off the body, as you do see here for Oscar De La Hoya as well. Here's a guy that is looking forward to the major spotlight, not to be intimidated by it. And uh, as you said, a major event in Spain, and he seems ready to come up with a big night. Well, we're on in Spain in English. Of course, uh, it's also on in Spanish over there. But we've got a huge audience in Spain, so uh, we'll give you the call and tell you everything that your man is doing. Castillejo in the white shoes with the fringe on him and the fringe uh, shorts. This guy, again, a very good boxer. Oscar starts right in, jab, 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 right hand, and almost drops him in the first round. But that was more off balance was Castillejo. He's got to be a little bit nervous. Uh, only his, uh, I think it's his fourth fight overseas, first time in the USA. And coming to Las Vegas, Nevada is a huge thing for him and uh, all the people that are with him. And yet, despite that big task for a guy to have to come up against, his overall maturity has helped him throughout the week in handling questions and in handling the spotlight. I've gotten the sense that he will get over that hump sooner than most in this situation. Well, he's got Samson Lukowicz who works with him and can speak the, both languages, so He's helped them out a lot in getting ready for this. So uh, right now, though, in round number one, De La Hoya is picking off the punches on the gloves of uh, as uh, Castillejo tests his uh, jab. You see Oscar what, doing what he always does in the first round. Goes with his hooks and go downstairs. He'll test his jab. He'll test his right hand. And most of his stuff is landing. Not all of it. Oscar hanging that uh, left glove low because he has such quick hands, trying to invite 
Castillejo to come in. Look at the body of Castillejo. Great, great shape. Oscar has a different body style. He doesn't have the ripple muscles, but he has the perfect body for a boxer with long striated muscles in his arms. And he is deceptively tall. He's got a good reach, even though he looks like a chiseled, compact boxer. And for De La Hoya, although the power is going to be there, this could be a stage of his career now where we're going to see a lot more from his intelligence guiding where he goes in fights as he goes up against bigger guys. And Davey certainly has that. He may not have the power, but we'll find that out in this fight. We'll see if he can drop this guy at all. So first off, we're going to see if he can beat him. I mean, like I said at the outset, this isn't a walkover. The champion out there tonight is Javier Castillejo. He's not afraid of De La Hoya as he digs to the body. Right on the liver shot there. Chopping right hand as Javier goes low, Oscar goes high. Good exchange, the crowd loves it. Anytime De La Hoya does anything, and I mentioned there's a sizable crowd here to support Castillejo, but it's overwhelmingly for Oscar De La Hoya as the right hand crashes to the left side of the head of Castillejo. The bell ends. Round number one, trainers when they come to Las Vegas and come to the States for the first time, they're all hopped up, but they know what that kid can do. They're confident in Castillejo. This is round number two. The Colonel Bob Sheridan with Dave Bontempo. Hope wherever you are around the world, especially you folks that are taking it in English in Spain, are enjoying our night from Las Vegas, Nevada. It was a good battle of the jabs in the opening round, captured by Oscar De La Hoya. And every fight, he gets an early sense of what's going to work for him, and he will go to that strength. And if he forces a change in his opponent's strategy, he will adjust to that. And here, he's up at 154. And although he'll win the power, he's content to do as much boxing as necessary, to use as much in the jabbing department as is necessary. Well, he outboxed Castillejo in the first round, and a lot of Castillejo's shots are being smothered and caught in the gloves of uh, Oscar De La Hoya. Well, Oscar's fighting very confident. I don't like the fact that he has that left hand down, but it paid off for him that time because he got right to the forehead. Remember, Oscar's very quick. And Castillejo looks almost a little bit muscle-bound, and Vic Dracula says, keep him up, guys. We don't want anything to happen. This is looking like a dandy of a fight so far here. That's something that you mentioned, the muscle-bound comment, that uh, Oscar has made a lot of guys look slow and not quite getting a nice flex action on their jab or letting their punches go smoothly because he's got that quickness edge, and there he shows it with the head, making a nice move defensively on the inside to get into punching range. And Castillejo, while he doesn't have great bulky muscles, you can see that his muscles appear to be much tighter than Oscar's. Oscar has those long striated muscles and it's perfect. Chop, 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 body shots. Wild with the left hand goes Castillejo. And Oscar's still quick on his feet. The quickness comes with him even at 147. The power, well, we're gonna see before the fight's over. And he's made a nice adjustment in that category coming up to 154 pounds. He drilled Castillejo with a good right hand, and it was the second punch in the exchange. First one got blocked, he kept on following through and nailed them with a good shot. And from the Castillejo perspective, you're thinking, hey, I've got the title, this is my weight class, I should be able to get into some kind of comfort zone during this fight, and that's what we're going to find out. Well, Castillejo is getting a lot of shots off, but then again, being caught and smothered. Uh, sometimes Oscar even uses two hands when he comes out with that jab, because Oscar does have quicker hands. Loading up, windmilling again with the right hand is Castillejo. And Oscar's so slick at slipping punches because he's in and out, in and out. The old Angelo Dundee adage hit and don't get hit. Bell ends round two. Closer round, but I think you got to give it to De La Hoya. Three interesting fights so far. The champion in the black trunks with the white shoes and the tassels is Javier Castillejo from Madrid, Spain, the reigning 154-pound champion of the world in his seventh title defense. Oscar, two and two in his last four fights with wins over Arturo Gatti and Daryl Coley and very disputed losses to Felix Trinidad and Shane Mosley. A majority decision uh, uh, loss to Trinidad and a split decision loss to Shane, so 
He would love to get back at these guys, but he's got a tall order here in front of him tonight. And so far, it's going well. And an excellent right hand by De La Hoya as Castillejo drifted into the path of it. Look, when you watch these guys, they both want to start with the jab, but watch how De La Hoya gets close to Castillejo into the punching range first. And that's why with the little lean of the head, the movement, the quick shift of the feet, he gets into the punching zone and scores. Whereas for Castillejo, he cannot get that subtlety mastered, and his jabs are coming up short. People ask uh, why or does he lose uh, friends when he switches uh, trainers, but Oscar's frankly, he says, no, I want a little, little something different from each guy, and he's gone through a ton of trainers. And now, you know, Floyd Mayweather Sr. is a great defensive coach, and uh, I can see Oscar getting hit less than, of course, in the Toro Guardian fight. It was so offensive-minded, it was difficult to say, but his defense here has been terrific, and I think that's part of the coaching of uh, Mayweather Sr. And that's what's going to be his blueprint for success moving forward as if you would suspect the power would drop off a little bit your key is the boxing and the key will be your defense if you can bring those things with you even if the power subsides a little bit you can flourish in a heavier weight class and another interesting thing about De La Hoya and the questions brought up about well does he not like this guy or that guy because of the change in trainers he is one of the rare guys who has changed trainers and not been losing fights when he does that or not look back on dissatisfied efforts when he changes trainers. He has a tactical reason for doing it, which is one of the rare instances in boxing where that happens. And every trainer says that, and he has no enemies amongst the trainers that he's gone through. Uh, I admire him for doing that and learning as much as he can. I mean, Oscar, you remember, is only 28 years of age in spite of all the titles. I mean... This kid is something else. Wow, with the left hand goes Oscar. And very rarely do you see him get too wild with his hooks. He usually catches a piece of the guy. And as we were talking about the, the different trainers, he gave us the Gil Clancy feint. Yeah. Gil Clancy taught him that feint. Closing seconds now of round number three. Oscar tries to finish with a couple of shots. Here comes the bell to end the third round. Oscar's daddy, Yoel, shouting some uh, words of inspiration to his son. He's always at ringside for Oscar's fights and has been since the Olympics. All right, we're set to go to the fourth round. Uh, unofficially, I've given Oscar all three of the first three rounds based on landing heavier shots than has Castillejo. But remember, Castillejo in black is the champion to the right of your screen. That's Oscar De La Hoya in the red to the left of your screen. Third man in the ring, Vic Draculich. Oscar doing some of that feigning Dave you're talking about taught to him by Gil Clancy who uh, is a big believer in feigning to get guys to make a move and then you nail them. Hey you get them off balance they react to it they drop the shoulder or they get frozen for a second and then you can pop another shot home. The De La Hoya as we so often see starting with the jab and getting right on top of guys when you see him fight after fight when do you see a wasted round. You very, 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 very rarely. I think he learned that in the Trinidad fight because uh, he's not going to waste any more rounds in his career, I'll tell you that. Notice uh, when we have the wider shot for you that Oscar has that right foot, uh, you know, twisted around almost perpendicular to where the way you see that. Good shot. Thanks, Frank Belmont. Appreciate it. That shows exactly what I'm talking about because with that foot in that position, he can drive and either hook or land a very stiff jabs. And also, it sets him up driving hook and then the right hand behind it so he's, he's always done that see even and, and Dave when you see when he's in the kill zone he's moving his head so it's a very difficult target for Castillejo to get up by the time you get the thought and it hits your brain and you throw the punch he's gone see that you you can hang around in the kill zone so to speak where you can be nailed if you know what you're doing if you can move your head and if you know how much time you can spend in there and get out because you can also get a better offensive opportunity when you get close. What you love about De La Hoya watching fight after fight with him is how he can sense what is the most of the opportunity and get out. Whether it's a flurry in which he hurts a guy 
or whether it's a situation where he works inside and gets two jabs. Then he reloads and goes to the next situation. What he does, he basically breaks down every round into a series of skirmishes. And I'll tell you, his positioning is absolutely perfect. About 90, I would say 95% of the time, he's in absolutely the position that he dictates where he wants to be, where he wants to start. Will he square up with the right hand to get a left hook in, or will he drive off the back foot to get his good, powerful jab in? This time he just measures it, and you knew he was going to come with an uppercut after that. And there's the, what I call the 45 when he drives that left hand from the hip towards the head. It's not a hook. And it's not a straight uh, punch. And that time he lands the right hand as uh, Javier feels the ropes in the back. But he's just nothing dramatic. He's just outboxing this guy at 154. It's perfect. Meanwhile, Casiejo is not landing enough punches at all. And we've got four rounds in the books. And I got Oscar winning them all. And has learned from Floyd Mayweather Sr. Use the feint. And, and when he does that, and he's been doing that more, at least in the last round, and it really sets up shots from clean shots where Castillejo if there's any problem for him he can't land clean shots with Oscar's defensive moments we look for the offense all the time and a little bit of scoring goes on defense but very little but nonetheless the good defense sets up great offense and you have to react to that feint if you're De La Hoya's opponent it's just human nature you flinch you think that you're going into defensive mode to block a jab and then he's able to pull that back and he doesn't overdo it so it's not something that's easy to time over the course of a fight and here's De La Hoya again notice the positioning notice how he pays almost no price for getting inside it can be a jab it can be a bob and weave it can be a slide it can be a shuffle but De La Hoya gets into punching position more cheaply than just about anybody in boxing. And Dave, as you were just as you were explaining that to our uh, viewing audience, he got hit by a, a pretty good right hand, pretty good in terms of the fact that it got to his chin, but he was rolling with it, and uh, so no power felt at all. And that's important that we see that uh, he's not getting hit with power shots here at 154. He's landed the power shots. He hasn't dropped this guy, but the face is starting to Look a little bit in the messy side of Castillejo. Castillejo with his back to you. Oscar working upstairs right now, and he can come downstairs just as quick. You know, when he has both hands down like this, he's filled with confidence. Not only does he sense vulnerability and weakness when he looks in an opponent's eyes or maybe hears a grunt from a punch, but when he senses an opponent slowing down the pace, he automatically steps up his own instinctively and that is what he is doing here getting closer and letting the hands go more now he pays a price there that was an important move for Castillejo to answer for the time being even as Oscar rolled with it. yeah that would be the best punch landed throughout the course of this fight by uh, certainly by Castillejo I mean but Oscar's just being able to gobble up most of the stuff Nice defensive work there by Castillejo. And then, as I say that, Oscar, look at it. He landed about six punches, but two of them with really malice of war. Power. And when he gets close, De La Hoya always goes to work. And right now, he's lingering a little bit inside that zone, but he's got his hands held high so he can't be hit, and Castillejo is not going to the body. See, watch Castillejo's hands. He wants to hit him in the head, and Oscar's got his hands held high. Then he dips and catches him in the butt. This is really good boxing. The bell ends the fifth round, and again, while Castillejo, it's not a really felt round. some nice power that time because he kept moving his head back and forth. So this is round six at the MGM Grand Garden Arena here in Las Vegas, Nevada, on a beautiful June night. It's hot outside of the desert, but it's great inside here. The fighters are certainly letting off a lot of steam and heat. They're working hard for you. De La Hoya seems again like he's got some sort of second win right now. When you see him get up on his toes, stops, position himself in front, does a nice job blocking the right hand of Javier Castillo. Javier trying to paw with the jab, and Oscar answers with a stiff jab. Well, you know De La Hoya is eager to get into a mid-round surge. We see so many mid-round surges from him during the course of fights. But here, he is also sticking to the discipline, 
jabbing, respecting Castillejo, trying to break him down. Seeing a little bit more body work here from Oscar as he tries to totally slow Castillejo down, get in tight, and land some good right hands. Jab and then go downstairs again. And again, he's right on top of his opponent. You see, he has the quickness to hold that left hand down because he's going to go for the hook with that. Instead, he goes with the straight jab, jab, jab. That's a positioning move. Look for the right hand behind that. Musk is such a terrific boxer. People just don't realize it. They think it just happens automatic that he knocks guys out. And he's in against a bigger man, 154 pound, and a legitimate guy that's been fighting 154 for years. And Oscar so far holding up to the test. I got him winning every round. Look at this. Who's landing the punches here, Dave? That's the story. Yeah, De La Hoya getting in, blocking. One got through there out of three by Castillejo, enough to keep him coming forward and try to land. But there's two excellent shots by De La Hoya and follows Castillejo. Now, watch with that how he denies Castillejo the luxury of regrouping. I land two shots, I shuffle over to the side, I'm right back on top of him. That right hand is there for Oscar, and he's doing that little feint to the left, trying to get him to feint with him, and if he does, he'll nail him with the right hand. See, that's why he's parring with his left now as he sneaks off. Instead, he goes down. Oscar will take whatever you give him. You're going to hold your left hand high. He'll nail you to the body with the right hand. I mean, Cassiejo is a terrific boxer here, but he, you know, the defensive tactics. There's a perfect example on the gloves, on the shoulders. Positioning again by Oscar. He's moving in but not getting hit. Don't like this left hand down here. He's inviting the right hand, and he got it that time. He didn't get hit hard. He got hit hard with a left hook, though. So that ignites Oscar. Still, I don't, I'd, I'd love to give him a round to Cassio, but I can't give him that one. Okay. Not enough to win rounds, but enough to make a couple of statements. At right, right after that, I mean, Oscar's feeling the power at 154. But he's landing more power shots than his Castillejo because of his basically his terrific defense. Every every once in a while when he has a lapse, Castillejo has capitalized. But I think I can remember only three shots uh, that were significant to the head of uh, De La Hoya. He had that combination a couple of rounds ago. He had that nice uh, shot in the last round that you just described. And people are watching a chess match now. That Oscar De La Hoya is moving towards the Queen in a hurry. And this is only round seven, the second half of this world championship fight. And don't forget the man in black has the title. His Oscar body shots, head shots. You hear the crowd's reaction right away. Anytime Oscar does anything, good jab crashes to the forehead, the temple area of Castillejo. And at lighter weight classes, what De La Hoya did, even in the beginning of this round, would have dropped guys up at the 154 pound class. It's enough to get him respect and get him points, but he has to go back to the drawing board and try to score with enough punches where the power can be respected, but outbox the guy. Well, he's doing that, Dave, and, and that's the key. He's been able to gobble up on three occasions the power of Castillejo, who's a legitimate 154 pound fighter. And meanwhile, Oscar's just outboxed this guy. So he's using what tools he has as he moves up in weight. And that's his boxing skill, his quickness, his good defense. And you have to take your patience deeper into fights as you move up in these divisions. Whereas the big shots you land may not turn your opponent as it did in the lighter weight classes, but you have to keep your discipline as he's doing here. Again, getting right on top of Castillejo, doing the smart boxing thing, moving the feet, Always making the instinctive move and often the correct one. When Oscar has his hand down, it's not by mistake, it's by design. It's not because he's fatigued. He's trying to draw this guy in. So he can chop him with the right hand. See that? He missed the uppercut there, then boom, right back with a uh, sort of straight right hand there. Now he's parring with the left, but he's in position to really land a right hand. This time. Castillejo comes forward and smothers all that, lands a couple of shots with Oscar, right hand. But every time Castillejo does something, look at Oscar comes back and lands two or three. And he's right on him, taking away any breathing room. So Castillejo is in a reaction mode 
rather than a get off first mode. And that's to De La Hoya's credit. He's doing this against a very good fighter. You can see why Castillo has been so successful as the bell ends round number seven because, you know, he's standing up to Oscar, but he's just losing every round. Ahead, let's see if he executes that. All that's good for about 10 or 15 seconds, and it's back to what you learned in the gym. Here we go, round eight. The Colonel Bob Sheridan with Dave Bontempo. We're at the MGM Grand Garden Arena here in Las Vegas, Nevada. And a perfect night for boxing. Good crowd from Spain in town all week, and all of Austin's fans from L.A. Stinky right hand get through, snap the head, right hand again, partially blocked by Castillejo. Nobody's been down, nobody's been shaken. White Eye starting to break up a little bit uh, of Castillejo. Oscar usually has those puffy cheeks about this time in a fight, and he's got him tonight, but not as bad as usual. Which is good since he's fighting a heavier guy. Yeah, he's a uh where you stirred pull. Castillejo a few times. Not shaken him, but he has got his attention and moved him a number of times with the power shots. Not enough to hurt him necessarily, but enough to gain respect and to keep his good positioning. Here he is outside again, dictating. And now he's in a great spot because he's the guy coming up with speed, and Castillejo has to turn the tables on De La Hoya, and it's a remote possibility at this point. Floyd Senior asked for more body shots, and in fact, there have been more body shots, but Oscar's back to the head now. You see that right eye of Castillo starting to blow up. Lands a decent right hand that time, because Oscar has his left hand down. He's almost inviting him to throw it, but that's because he wants the counter. But look at his positioning is perfect all the time, Dave. Every once in a while, I mean, you're in a fight. Every once in a while, he's going to get clipped that he has every once in a while. But 95% of the time, he's in perfect position. Look at that. Four punches thrown, none landed with a head move. Then he comes back and throws a combination. And right after Castillejo misses, De La Hoya jumps right on top of him. So first thing you have to do is move the head properly so that the punches whiz by your chin by a couple inches. Then you get right back into the attack zone. Time after time, you need the bounce, you need the instinct, you need the reflexes, and you need the heart to do that, which De La Hoya has done. And from the Castillejo House perspective, hey, at least he's landed a few shots on Oscar De La Hoya here, reminding him that he is in a 154-pound fight. Castillejo as hell has done everything he can. He just can't get to Oscar. And even there, he tried three right hands. Oscar either gets his elbow up, and he lands a looping right hand on his own, taps him again on the left side of the cheek. It's the right side that he's busting up, lands the left hook and the light right grazing right hand. Castillejo's got to be frustrated. He's the reigning champ, but he's never fought anybody. This is a big step up in class for him. He's fought a lot of his fights in Europe. He came to Mexico for his last fight and beat a, a decent Javier Rodriguez in Mexico City, who's nowhere near in the class of a De La Hoya as the... But remember, he's the champ, and he's got championship qualities. So can he dig down? Remember, nobody down. Nobody hurt in this fight, really. Bruises around the eyes of both guys. There's the body shot by De La Hoya, straight jab, and he begins to pick him apart in the early going here of round number nine. This is something you would see, say, in round five in a welterweight bout for him. Now, as he moves up to 154, more breakdown in boxing required, and it takes till round nine where you see the double and triple hands popping through. And even then, for De La Hoya, it may not be a permanent thing as far as the power is concerned. But he is willing to box. A decent uppercut that time uh, by Castillejo. Oscar right back, bangs him with the downstairs this time, right in the soloplex region. Nice defensive work that time by Castillejo. Oscar, his punch was a little off target that time. Of course, there's got to be fatigue for him, too, because he's fighting a heavier man. We're in the ninth round. There's been a lot of hard work here. It's been a boxing show. We hear the crowd, a little bit of reaction, and now Oscar picks it up, lands about five punches, and that six or seven punch floor. And then immediately, the few boos that you're being here go to, yeah, yeah. Very partisan De La Hoya crowd, and he lands a couple of shots there again. Castillejo almost waiting now as Oscar measures him. When he does that with the left hand, you know the right's coming. 
And his Oscar all over him now, picking up the pace. Castillo doesn't want to have his back on those ropes because Oscar knows what to do. It's uh, Oscar with a decent left hand and then right hand back. So maybe he got the adrenaline flow after that series of punches. And this is the most that Castillejo has taken in one round as De La Hoya loading up the three, four punch combinations and getting a lot of good power and turn into his punches here as he settles into a groove, the jab landing, everything going De La Hoya's way here, his finest round of the fight. And yet, he shows the discipline to box because his 154 pound opponent, who's a durable guy, is still there. Durability is exactly what uh, Javier Castillejo is, is showing right now. But he's not winning any rounds, including this one. Look at this combinations. In between, Javier, uh, Javier Castillejo gets something off, but look at the amount of punches that Oscar's landing. And Oscar, by the way, is a little bit fatigued himself. That's why he's bouncing up on those toes to try to get those blood flow through those legs. But look at how hard he's sit right down in that right hand. And he wants to throw right hands here now. I can feel it. He expended a lot of energy in this round, too. It was a very good round for him. Yeah, the bell ends the ninth, and that's a no question. Blitzes through the round. I don't know if you folks could pick it up, but uh, Time in. in De La Hoya's corner, uh, Floyd Mayweather Sr. said, you know, you got this fight. Just, uh, just stay right on your business. You're doing fine. But I don't know about telling a guy if he's got the fight, especially, you know, where Oscar had that last three rounds against Trinidad. But I don't think Oscar will make that mistake, believe me. You're going to close this show out as best he can, unless Castillo catches him. Remember, it's Castillo whose title that's on the line here tonight. Oscar, uh, just terrific boxing here. The difference in hand speed now. And the interesting thing about what trainers tell fighters also is what fighters decide they will believe and take in in the course of a fight. The trainer may say, okay, look, you've got this fight won, be careful. But you can still go out there on your own terms. You're a, a multi-division champion over the years, and you get your own sense of what you want to do, and you don't have to take blind orders from the corner, but try to take the best comment, and maybe the best comment that he takes from that is, yes, I'm in good shape as far as this fight up until now. Well, again, the Mosley fight and the uh, Trinidad fight was so close, split decision, and a majority decision. He's not going to take any chances here. Castillejo trying to come on here in the 10th. But while well, there's good aggressiveness, look who just keeps him off balance all the time. Jab in the face again to the right side, and he chops him with the right hand. Nothing really big, but just controlling the flow of the fight. Stiff jab. See that foot in perfect position to throw the stiff jab now. <laughs> Double jab and evades the counter shot then lands the right hand against the guy who tried to throw everything at him nice hey, sequence by hey, De La Hoya. you're right Dave I mean we're watching brilliant boxing here tonight at one stage some few people were booing there's a solid right hand on the chin and again that would have dropped guys at probably at 147 but at 54 Castillejo even though it's in the later rounds is able to gobble it up and that's why, as you look at this, this looks like a transformation division for Oscar De La Hoya, where we're going to see for him more style and guile to mix in with his power. Now, he can land power shots that can slow guys down, and that's pretty much what he's done against Castillejo. But if he doesn't finish them, he's willing to go deep into fights, outbox them, outpoint them, and take it that way. All right, it's just a perfect fight plan for this fight. He's controlling most every single round, and he's certainly controlling the 10th round again. And Castillejo is kind of throwing more desperation shots, so Oscar wants to be sure he doesn't get clipped. You always think of that Michael Moore thing with uh, George Foreman when Moore. Coming up to round 11, the MGM Grand Garden Arena, and Colonel Bob Sheridan with Dave Bontempo. Glad that you can be with us to watch Oscar De La Hoya move up very successfully so far to the 154-pound division. Now, the reigning champ, his reign may be short, but he almost needs to knock out Oscar De La Hoya right now. This WBC champ, this was his 
seventh title defense. And he's not defending it well just yet. But there's uh, about five and a half minutes to go in this contest, so it's time for him. Because he's not out on his feet by any way, uh, shape or manner. The difference for Castillejo is he's used to jabbing guys and landing and driving them back and then transferring into a second part of his attack. But what's happened here is a lot is being blocked. And while some stuff gets in, he's also being hit harder. He's got a guy on top of him all the time. And that's one of the most underrated aspects of Oscar De La Hoya's attack is that he doesn't let you breathe in there. He is right on top of you, and he puts you into a reactionary mode rather than an offensive mode. In this fight, Dave, I've loved Oscar's defense. He's had more offense than his opponent in every round, including this one. Lands a clean shot with the right hand, spins ahead of Castillejo. Castillo must be tremendously frustrated halfway through this 11th round of the fight. Just hasn't been able to do anything with Oscar De La Hoya. There were a couple of close rounds, and he might have won one round, possibly in the fight. I don't know. But other than that, it's been just a boxing clinic for Oscar De La Hoya, which was the way to attack this 154-pound division, I think. And a good example of that just moments ago with the jab in the right hand by Castillejo. Lands the jab, tries to put the right hand behind it. It's a good sequence, but the right hand whistles by as De La Hoya is already one step over to the left and then coming at him. Just an exquisite sense of timing that De La Hoya has on the inside. And although he's taking a few shots here and Castillejo is gritty, De La Hoya doing a very nice job from the intelligence standpoint. Hoya's defense there, I mean, Castillejo threw about six punches. The ones that weren't taken on the gloves by Oscar, he was able to just duck away from them, doing a great job. Castillo now gets a little body shot, but body shots uh, at this stage aren't going to get the job done as Oscar buries the right hand, left hook, now the left hook. Can he finish him here? He shouldn't be sitting on the ropes, and he better start throwing punches. Vic Dracula says keep him up. His eyes are still clear, so Vic not thinking of stopping the fight. But there's a series of jabs, right hands. Still hasn't had the time is called. The bell ends the 11th round. He knows that he's way out in front. But now you see the nature of the fighter. It's not the nature of the fighter to just run. Let's see what Oscar does. You have to do with the thing that got you here and stay in the same rhythm that you had. You don't need to be reckless. But you need to get the double jab out. You need to be moving. You need to be setting a good pace. Well, he's done that. He's landed three jabs already. Oscar is not staying away from this guy. He's fighting him. He has those hands held high. The frustration I can't imagine that Cassiejo is feeling because everything he does, Oscar smothers him. On very few occasions has he been able to land a clean shot. Jab bounces the head back at Castillejo. Body downstairs, back up with the right hand. Hard right hand that time. And the one of the most frustrating aspects of fighting De La Hoya is that he will not unnecessarily gamble. He'll fight you, but he will not give you a chance to make up for 11 rounds of his dominance by giving you one crack at it. So he doesn't open up and gamble and lunge and try to get into combinations here. Everything is coming off the jab. And that has been the story throughout this fight. He takes as much as the situation allows, and then he moves into a different situation. Misses the chopping shot, does Castillejo. Now Castillejo, in all honesty, for the first minute and 30 seconds of this round, has done a decent job. Oh, look at that. Just as I say that, he snaps his head with the right hand. He had to jinx him, huh? <laughs> <laughs> De La Hoya on the bounce here in the 12th round. I'll tell you one thing, no matter what comes down here, we know that De La Hoya is going to win this fight now uh, because Cassiejo doesn't seem to have the power right now left to really hurt Oscar. But it's been a brilliant, brilliant move to 154 for Oscar De La Hoya. His boxing sensationally landed heavier punches. His defense is always there. Selected his moments. He's landing the right hand at will now and just has frustrated the daylights out of 
uh, Javier Castillejo from Spain, who his reign is about to end in about 40 seconds as the super welterweight champion of the world of the WBC. Oscar nailing shots here and making it definitive. Not satisfied to just cruise. Castillejo showing his bottle, but look at this. Right back comes Oscar. Nice five punch combination. Good positioning. Landed them solidly, and when his opponent did not seem shaken, De La Hoya just backed up and started boxing again. And that has been the story of the fight for him. And the crowd's really into it now. A really solid right hand, right on the chin. And at the end, down goes the champion. It's all over for him now. He'll take the standing eight count, and there won't be a lot of time left. How about that? To make it definitive, Oscar did have enough power in the end to drop this guy. It's all over. It's either going to be a shutout for Oscar De La Hoya, or possibly in 119, 108, uh, all the way. We'll see what happens. And what a perfect. Ladies and gentlemen, here at the MGM Grand of Las Vegas, we go to the judges' scorecards. After 12 rounds, all three judges scored the bout the same, 119 to 108, all for the winner by unanimous decision. Now a six-time world champion and new WBC Super Welterweight Champion of the World, the Golden Boy, Oscar De La Hoya. Well, all the judges had it the same way, 119 to 108. We had it 100 to 107. Oscar for winning another championship. Thank you so much, um, Tell us, give us your take on this fight. Was there anything in Castellejo that was unexpected by you? Um, no, not at all. Not at all. I just think that uh, I felt inside the ring as if he was a little too slow for me to react fast enough. You know what I'm saying? Um, when you have a slow fighter in the ring with you, I mean, he's a strong guy. He's all the credit in the world, but when you have a guy who's fast and has to make you think and aware up in the ring, then that makes you a better fighter inside the ring. With Castillejo, he was a, a, a fighter who hit hard, but was slow. He didn't make me really think too much. And that there kind of brings you down sometimes to his level, but my speed, my defense, um, everything was good. I'm very pleased with everything. You seemed a little frustrated going into the late rounds that you had been unable to put on an Oscar-like show in there, even though you were dominating the fight. Were you frustrated? Uh, not, not frustration, but I knew there was something that wasn't there. I mean, there was something that wasn't complete. And um, we just have to uh, go back and train and, uh, and fight the bigger and better opponents. Is it fair to say that this was one of your more well-rounded opponents in terms of using both your hands and using them in different ways. Definitely, definitely, because uh, we showed that we have uh, the body shot, the, the, the jab to the body, the right hands over his jab, blocking his jab, coming back with my jab, feigning with my jab, left hook, so blocking, rolling the punches. Um, but still, we have to work on a lot of things. I mean, Mayweather still has a lot on his, on his arsenal, so um, we're just going back to the drawing board and come back with better stuff. In becoming a well-rounded or a better-rounded fighter, are you sacrificing in any way that lightning left hand that won you so many fights? No, it was very difficult to land a, a left hook because I, I guess he was a, a fighter who, uh, who was expecting it all the time. Um, so it was, I had to use something different. For instance, my jab to the head, uh, to the head and to the body, doubling up on the jab and using more right hands. So, that was going to be the key. So, so you feel that when you fight the guys you want to fight now, they have to think about more than your left hand. Oh, they have to think about a complete fighter now. This is, Gotti was the first step, Castillo second step. Now it's like three strikes and you're out. That's the fastballs coming right at them. All right, let's take a look at the knockdown at the end. How satisfying was you that finally, after 11 rounds, <laughs> two minutes and 50 seconds, right. you finally and got him? It was him. the right hand that wobbled him, that, that, that started the job. And uh, with the left hook right back, right on his uh, cheekbone or, or the chin, um, I felt that I, I was going to drop him because it was solid. There it is again.
So does, does that put a kind of, uh, of an exclamation point on what was a dominant performance for you? Um, of course, always. It's always going to be that way. I mean, I'm always going to ask myself questions. We're always going to go back to the drawing board and work on better stuff. We're always going to work harder, improve more things. And that's what Mayweather brings to the table, that he's going to show me more. And I'm, I'm, I'm learning and I'm, I'm excited to come back and, and, and rule the boxing world.